Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. In this Go With The Flow, we are going to talk about updating a parent record based off of updates to child records. And the specific use case I'm gonna talk about here is demand task. In demand management, a demand can have multiple demand tasks associated with it. But there's no functionality around the updates to the demand tasks. So you could be having work notes being updated, the demand tasks being reassigned, the demand tasks transitioning through different states, and the demand manager has zero visibility to this because there's nothing in the demand task that notifies the demand manager in any capacity. So we're gonna use Flow Designer to fix that. I've gone ahead and created a flow called update parent demand from demand task. And the first thing we're gonna to need to do is figure out the trigger. I'm gonna click add trigger. I only want it to happen on updated records. What updated records? Demand tasks, demand task. We also want this to run for every single update. So I'm gonna to check to see every single time if significant things have changed. So every update, and I don't really have any conditions. I could put in a whole bunch of or conditions to make it so that it triggers less. But for this one, we're just gonna say every update and we'll let our if conditions handle it for us. Okay, since I've already done some thinking on to the best way to build this, what I wanna do is create some variables to store some information for me. The first thing I wanna know is what the parent of this demand task is. Yes, that's readily available to me by drilling into this trigger record demand task and scrolling all the way to parent, but you know what? Scrolling down that list sucks. I just wanna go somewhere, grab it, and drop it wherever I need to. So let's go to our flow variables, and I'm gonna add one. This is gonna be called parent demand, and it's gonna be a reference to the demand table. What I also want to do is take all the significant updates from this demand task and I want to put it into a work note on the demand parent. So I want to create another new flow variable and we are going to call this parent work note and it is going to be a string. Okay, I've got my flow variables defined. Let's get into it. So my intent here is to take all significant updates and push them into one work note for the parent demand. And this is the trick because in our trigger record updated, there is this changed fields object and it stores all of the fields that have changed. The thing about it is there's going to be multiple of them. So what we have to do is basically make a loop to iterate through all the field updates, grab the ones we think are significant and do something in those cases. So the first thing is let's loop through them. We are gonna do that with a for each flow uh, logic. So for each what? For each all of these changed fields from our trigger record. I could have just updated work notes. I could have just updated the assigned to. I could have adjusted the work notes, the assigned to, the state, the priority, the urgency, blah, 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 all at once. So this is going to make sure that we look at every single one of them. Now that we're inside of that loop, now we can start putting if statements like, did the assignment change? Did the work notes changed? This allows you to be pretty exclusive what you think is a significant change. In this example, I'm only gonna do a sign to and work notes. Let's start off with work notes. So we're gonna to go to our flow logic and click if, and this is gonna be if work notes changes. And we will know if work notes changes if this item in the change fields array is named work notes. So we're gonna grab our FD changed fields and the field name is work notes. That's how we'll know that there's been a change to it. What do we do when we know that work notes has changed? Let's dump that to the big work note variable that we're gonna push to the parent demand. So we are going to go to flow logic and say set flow variables. We are going to take the parent work note and this is tricky because we wanna take the parent work note and basically say whatever the parent work note was before plus this update. Because again, there could be multiple significant updates. If the assigned to changes, if the state changes, if the work notes changes, we want those to be all in a list in the work note we update the demand with. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna enter this code section and we're gonna, let's see, can we blow this up big? So we are gonna return whatever the parent work note field was plus something else. So how do we know what the parent work note was? 
So this is where we're going to go FD underscore data. This is basically a code way to interact with your data section here. So FD data dot, and if you just be patient, it'll tell you the things you can dot walk down to. So I'm going to go to flow variables dot. I'm going to wait parent work note. Great. So it's, it is whatever it was plus equals, which means add onto whatever it was work note update. And we're gonna add this slash n. That makes it do a hard carriage return inside. I'm gonna say plus. Now we need to know what that current work note value is. So we're going to say fd underscore data again, dot something from that for each plus item plus current value. And then we're gonna add a couple more carriage returns. Okay, so I'm in the middle of recording and I realized I made a mistake, but it's super valuable for you to see that mistake and its consequences. So actually the first thing I wanted to do was take our flow variables and set whatever the parent demand is. So let's go to our add actions flow logic and let's set flow variables and let's take that parent demand and set that equal to the triggering records demand task records parent. Okay, the thing about it is I wanted that done beforehand. So let's move that up to the top. That's now flow action one. Really inconvenient because in the last couple minutes I showed you that we set flow variables and we did it via script. But if we go into there, that script hasn't changed. And you know what? This flow data dot underscore one, that is referring to this number one, and it's not there anymore. It's actually that for each that we're referencing here in the script is actually number two. So I got to change this to two. So if you're doing any scripting at all in your flow designer, if ever you're changing the order of the things in the flow, you got to be really cognizant about anything that you've done in the script that references a different flow step. Really super important. I'm glad I made that mistake so that you can see how to fix it. At any rate, now we've gone and set parent demand to the demand task records parent. And now we've gone through all the change fields and we've asked, has the work notes changed? If so, set this parent work note variable to whatever the parent work note variable was, plus that work notes uh, text. Okay, the next thing we're gonna ask is if the assigned to has changed. So we're gonna create another flow logic if assigned to changes. How did we do that before? Again, we went to our for each and we need to know if the field name is assigned to. Now, what happens if the assigned to changes? We want to make an update to that parent work note. So we're gonna add a flow logic item. We are going to set flow variables. Again, we are going to set the parent work note field. And now it should start making sense, right? Because with each iteration, if there's a significant field that changes, we wanna add to, not replace, the value of that parent work note variable. So let's get back into our script and let's say return. So we wanna take whatever the parent work note variable was plus, so we need FD underscore data dot flow variables dot parent work note. And we wanna make plus equal assigned to, and then we'll just add in whatever the new assigned to value is. What is that new assigned to? Well, let's just go FD underscore data. Let's go to the for each loop, which is where we're going to get this change thing. We're going to go to the item within that workflow node plus, uh, dot. And this time we're going to use current display value because we know assigned to is a reference. We don't want a sys ID. We want an actual name. Okay. So we're looking for significant updates. If those significant updates happen, we are dumping stuff into the flow variables. Now, what do we want to do? We want to update the actual demand. So let's go to add an action. We are going to update a record. Which record are we gonna update? The parent demand. We're gonna drop that into the record. Automatically knows what table it's from. Now we're just gonna add a field. I'm gonna update work notes. And what are we gonna up update work notes with? We're gonna update the parent work note. Let's save our flow and let's go ahead and test it. We're gonna run a test. I'm just gonna pick this 1105 demand task. Now, this is something you might not know. When you're testing the flow that's running on a record update, you can actually fudge the updates with this changed fields, which I think is awesome. So FD field changes details number one, 
we are going to change the work notes field and we are gonna put a current value of taxation is theft. I mean, it kinda is. Then I'm gonna add another change field. The field this time is gonna be assigned to. We're gonna set its current value to the sys ID of a user. That user just happens to be yours truly. And let's run the test. Let's view the results. Okay, let's dive deep here because we have a four each and we see one of two. That means two things changes. Isn't it convenient that we changed exactly two fields? Now we'll see that the first if statement, if work knows changed, that evaluated true, but the second one didn't. And why wouldn't the assigned to changes have evaluated to true if we changed the assigned to? Well, that's because it's a second item in that array. So if I said this is two of two, we'll see that the work notes changes didn't get recognized, but the assigned to changes did. This is why when we scripted our parent work notes variable, we had that thing that said, whatever the parent variable once was plus this new update. So no matter how many fields we change, it just keeps on adding two instead of replacing. We also see that the update record happened successfully. The proof is in the pudding though. Let's actually go to that demand, open the record, and we see that the work note update is taxation is theft, and the assigned to is Robert Fedora. There's an extra plus sign in there, probably just a syntax error at my point. That's where I go back into my flow designer and see what I did wrong. But there you have it, folks. Whenever you have a task hierarchy where you have child tasks and a parent task, and it's not obvious to the parent when the child has been updated, you can just use flow in a very simple and effective way in probably less than 15 minutes. You can be up and running with exquisite rolls up of information into that parent task. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the email picture here.